Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because I have a wonderful guest with me today. I'd like to introduce Brian Bergford. He is an expert in the transformation of change. He encourages and teaches others to do the impossible. The, the famous quote that he shares with the world is, giving people everything they want in life is easy. All you have to do is make them realize everything they really, everything they really, really want is, is inside of them already. Now, Brian earned his degree in psychology from the University of Colorado, taking a particular interest in neuroscience, uh, psychopathology, clinical psychology, and peak performance principles. His studies continued well beyond his university education as he, to this very day, attends seminars and he also has an appetite for reading and studying tremendous communicator, working with tremendous communicators, leaders, coaches, athletes, and he, he enterprises in high performers to support his continually involving strategies for human development. And today, thank you so much, Brian, for coming on to the show. It sounds like you have a lot on your plate and you're doing some wonderful things. So, you know, why don't you tell the world who you are and what you do and let's hear it because I'm very excited to learn more about you. Thanks, Stacey. I appreciate that. I'm excited to speak with you over this time as well. And I think it's going to be a terrific conversation. Uh, me in a nutshell. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see where this goes. Right? All right. I, I tend to play in a number of different areas, particularly specializing, obviously, in performance psychology and cre creating specific systems and psychological architectures for people to help support their goals, their aspirations, whether that be in business and sport and arts, et cetera, but really, really focus on people that are already performing really well and very highly accomplished. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, it becomes about eking out those extra percentage points, which you have to work increasingly hard for, and you have to have sophisticated systems in order to do something like that. Yes. Um, if you're kind of a beginner at something, you can almost do basically anything with not a ton of effort and get a lot of improvement. And as, of course, the kind of quote unquote law of diminishing returns as you go up that scale of excellence, it's so important that we have efficient efficient systems and processes in place because any inefficiencies uh, will kill you. I'm also an athlete. I'm a swimmer. And <laughs> it's interesting how much the water, because it's such a thick medium, amplifies mistakes and problems in, you know, a swimmer's stroke and inefficiencies. And I'm well attuned to that because that's just, again, that's what I love to do. Uh, I love and I enjoy competing in that. I actually really wasn't an athlete younger. I mean, if you count peewee football, maybe, or like peewee <laughs> football, uh, but certainly never played sports in middle school, high school, or college, took up swimming when I was 30 to kind of overcome a water phobia. And wow. I just kept going and now, you know, uh, you know, competing at a national level, it's been a huge blessing. Uh, so that's a little bit about that side. And of course, I, you know, I've owned multiple businesses, uh, understand entrepreneurship quite well, and the grind that that is. And I also love and am fascinated by and very connected to like the spiritual side of things, because as we were talking before we came on, all these parts of ourselves, um, you know, there's there's a lot of crossover in the way these weave pieces weave uh, into one another. Right. And so any change in one little area is going to affect this very complex system. And so I, uh, I love to understand all these different areas, even yes. though I specialize more in the psychological um, mental training side of things. Yeah. That's wonderful, you know, and it's amazing that you started to actually dive into becoming an athlete so later on in life and that you carried no interest in it before. But that happens actually to many people, even myself. When I was younger, I had no interest in writing and I ended up writing over 20 books. So sometimes we end up, you know, finding our passion later on in life. But you know what? Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a passion or, or know where you're going in the beginning of life. Sometimes life just takes you on a journey and you just, you, you follow this journey and you can't even believe where it takes you. Place is that you didn't even think that you were capable of actually achieving. And that sounds like a little something that kind of happened to you in the beginning. 
That's absolutely true. And I love how you put that because <clears throat> there's so much emphasis around like, let's create a plan and let's get down to business and let's map this thing out. And everybody feels like safe behind this plan. And I know where that's going to take me. And if I just do these steps and there's a place for that, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just interesting. Like the more that I kind of settle and lean into life, the more I just realize like, I don't really care. I don't need to know. I need less and less certainty because the more like security that I needed, the more I obsess over stuff like that. And the more, of course, working with clients over the years, I just, you see a tremendous amount of misery because people are trying to make things happen right. and not really understanding the dynamics and the, the, the layers of depth in terms of like what we're here for and trying to control all these outcomes is incredibly incredibly stressful, right? And yes. people are like stroking out over this kind of stuff. Could it be that maybe you don't need to figure life out? Yes. Maybe life isn't to be figured out and people get really, really caught up in that. And I can speak from experience, obviously. Right. Right. This is like, it's not, it's really, really not worth it. And so there's this ebb and flow or the yin and yang and, and understanding the balance of that, because as much as I'm about like high performance and athletics and like getting into that side of things, I'm also very much on the side of backing off and the yeah. allowingness of life and having that balance in there is, is, and you see it in athletics too, right? In sports. Yeah it's the perfect balance between tension and relaxation. If there's too much relaxation, things don't work. If there's too much tension, everything gets rigid and you can't actually move. And no. having the right frameworks in place to be able to put yourself in a headspace and sustain a proper headspace to function very well in whatever your endeavor is so that you can perform at the highest level. Um, but, you know, life is, is obviously a journey, but it's also fascinating and full of wonder. And if we aren't so rigid and closing ourselves off and having to make things work, yeah. it's amazing what unfolds in front of us. Yeah. I find sometimes, you know, we find we, we, we live a certain life and we sometimes, like you said, we, we, we carry these expectations or these plans and then we get frustrated and because we keep trying to achieve what we've planned out and we're not getting there. And maybe it's because we're not meant to be there. Maybe, you know, like we were talking about, you know, sometimes we have to go with our intuitiveness and what, you know, we really want inside what our, 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 our spirit or what, you know, you know, our guides are really trying to direct us in, you know, because we could have a plan, but it can get very frustrating. You have to have that happy medium and you kind of have to go with your inner sense and that feeling of satisfaction. What makes you truly happy? Do you feel like that sometimes? I do feel like that. I feel very much also like there's <clears throat> often such a disconnect between what we want and what we need and the, the lessons we're actually supposed to learn. And I think being open to that and just being humble enough to go like, I may have no freaking idea what I'm really doing here. <laughs> um, and one way I think around that or to support yourself is you're going through that process so that you don't feel like you're just adrift at sea with no, um, you know, you're just like floating out there and, and being carried around, you know, we don't necessarily want that. But if you can relieve, really, you know, for me, focusing in on the spirit of where we're going and thematically what it is that we're after and what's in our heart and our soul and our mind to go toward without getting hung up on the specifics and the details. And unfortunately, we just like live in a culture that's very much about details and nitty gritty and la 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 and getting yeah. overly intellectual about freaking everything and acting like the mind can solve all your problems. Like, here's a clue. The mind, your mind created all the problems you have right now. And you're trying to use that same vehicle to get out of those problems. I love and that. So, and so it's, you know, so <laughs> not, true. not relying on a mechanism that got you into the mess in the first place as your sole source of moving to greener pastures, if you will. So um, I do think committing to something, following what's in your heart in spirit, but thematically, like I said, in an overarching mm -hmm. theme and not obsessing over the particulars and um, specific vehicles that you think you have to have, because what you think you have to have is probably not anywhere near what you actually need. Right. 
So in a, in a sense, also is to also have some gratitude in your life and not try to overdo yourself. You know, some people, <laughs> you know, they want, especially in America, we want, we want, we want, we want, but, you know, sometimes we have to look at, you know, being gracious for what we have and it's great to want to improve yourself and make yourself reach higher levels we all should have goals you know long-term goals but also to you know not let your mind you know be your worst enemy like you said yeah exactly and I, and I think turning turning your mind into uh something that works with you and for you instead of uh, instead of against you and you think about you know like the terminator movies right uh, i was giving a talk recently and the the analogies kind of came out of nowhere but it's remember when like the machines, you know, we're, oh, these things are so great and they're going to help us uh, really, really move forward. And eventually the machine just took over and right. all of a sudden so society is upside down and can't figure it out. And a lot of us have gotten to that place where the machine has kind of taken us over. And instead of the mind serving us, we end up serving the mind and we're kind of captives and prisoners in this thing that's become so big and bloated yeah it has a monopoly on our lives instead of what it's supposed to be doing is serving you know our mission and our purpose and our and our goals instead of dictating who we're going to be how we're going to be and making us miserable along the way so um it's one of those fascinating things the mind is so 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 powerful it is problem with that level of power is if it doesn't have guardrails and you don't have it dialed in it can screw you over big time it's like we'll go my wife and i occasionally golfing and i'm not i'm not a huge golfer mm -hmm. <laughs> so you'll hear it a second but we'll do it <laughs> and she'll just go oh my gosh i don't know how you hit the ball that far i'm like honey i wish I only hit the ball as far as you because you actually hit the ball straight. Like I'm in the tall weeds in the pucker brush because I. Hit the <laughs> or, there's a lot of power behind it, but then I'm over three fairways trying to find my ball, and it's you know and tall weeds, and it's it's just crazy. So um, I think really appreciating the sort of majesty of a of a power, but without um, allowing it to kind of take us over and run yeah. us, and and that's that's the science and the art of things like mental training and a psychological strategy, et cetera. Now, when people come to you and I love like how, how you first started in the beginning, you, you, you say that, you know, trying to, to you're not trying, but achieving the impossible, that we all have the capabilities of achieving the impossible. Now, how, if you have goals in your mind, but you don't think it's possible, how do you tell someone and train someone or coach somebody that they have the capabilities to achieve the impossible? How do you get them on the right pathway that write the, their minds to think in a productive manner so they can try to reach the impossible? That's a great question. There's as with most things, a number of answers. And of course, everything we talk about here, we're, we're trying to touch on things that are going to have some general applicability to as many people as possible because everyone's an individual and has a totally different makeup, right? So yes. as I'm saying this stuff, I, I also want to like respect the fact that like I don't know individually everybody out there, um, you know, that's going to be listening to this and part of, part of your audience. But what I can say is, <laughs> let me start with this. My we were taught my wife and I were talking about like the do the impossible thing. And um, I was, you know, really inspired by it. I don't remember the exact conversation, but I do remember at one point she brought up like, that seems, I don't know if it was something along the lines of daunting or just almost, um, you know, kind of having that impossible dream that it's almost depressing. And yeah. I'm like, no, it's not. It's amazing. The only, th okay. The impossible is whatever that that is to you. So what you weren't doing yesterday, right? The impossible yeah. can be something where you take like one extra inch on a particular day. You know, you get that like little extra bit and just something that you really haven't done or done to quite that level or with that much focus, that much passion, that much presence and yes. just bring yourself into something that you have never done before. That is doing the impossible. So it goes in stages. We think about the impossibles a lot of times is like 
summiting Mount Everest. And that can be part of it. And maybe right. that's what it leads to. But where people get hung up a lot of times, I think, and, and myself included, when we make something so big and daunting, oftentimes, as an aside, to excuse ourselves from having to do anything at all, because it seems so big that like, well, I'm not anywhere close to that. So why even bother? Right. And then we totally let ourselves off the hook, not recognizing everything great and beautiful and wonderful in this world that we create or that we, uh, you know, we serve people in a greater way. It's done one tiny piece at a time. And it's doing yes. something that maybe you're like, gosh, I didn't know. I didn't know I could do that. You know, for me, um, it did a swimming is a good example. Cause like we just had a crazy workout this morning that I brought by the way. <laughs> <laughs> So I showed up and it's funny, like the, like the little group I was swimming with, you could just tell they were like kind of pissed at me about the whole situation. And like, mm -hmm. how did you even come up with this? And I, I knew it was coming, but there's something about that little twinge of ooh, like that thing in your stomach where you're like, I don't even know. I don't know if I can do this. Like, it's like not completely outside of the realm of possibility. Yeah. But holy mother of grace, this is going, if I do pull it off, this is going to hurt. And like, I don't know if I'm going to quite be able to put up with it. Um, and, you know, it was just a crazy, crazy workout. Yeah. And um, I didn't know if I could do it. The best thing that I could tell people was stop looking outside of yourself to be inspired go inspire yourself. That's your freaking job, right? Like yeah. when people come to me for coaching, I will not deal with limp dish rags. I will not push a limp noodle. Like you're responsible for motivating yourself. You're in spot responsible for inspiring yourself. That's not my job. If you need somebody to pick you up all the time and emotionally, you know, support you and everything else, like go figure that out with somebody else because yeah. like I want to take the people that know how to bring it and have batteries included and that's a skill set in and of its own but I think that's right. what we all aspire to is inspiring ourselves by doing something we haven't done before even if it's I'm so tired I just got home I'm about to walk in the door I know it's coming at me I got a bunch of kids whatever people's situation is but just taking a breath and like a transition point mm -hmm. and walking in and going in and like throwing your arms around your spouse or your kids or whatever that you don't feel like doing. Yeah. That is a huge victory. And then you celebrate that. And then you have another little victory and you celebrate that. That is how great things are built along the way. Of course, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to, you know, things are going to blow up. We're, we're going to fall short. We're going to fall from grace, whatever the case may be. Right. And that's where we need to have grace and compassion for ourselves. Because if we don't have that, there's no way on earth we're really going to strive and push ourselves because we know we're just going to have to face us and we're going to be so critical that it's like, what's the use? So right. I think grace is part of a winner and a high performers toolkit that you have to have that stocked and ready at all times. And you have to be willing to use it. Oh, I agree. I, I, I love how you phrased that too, because sometimes when people see the word impossible, they're thinking really, they're thinking way above their realm when really, like you said, it's just baby steps, doing one thing at a time and maybe tackling something that you didn't do before or retraining the brain and approaching a matter or a situation like greeting your family when you had a hard day at work and you're just not in the greatest of moods, just taking that deep breath before you walk in the house and giving them a hug. When you don't usually do that, you might come in like a grizzly bear that's a huge accomplishment. <laughs> That's achieving the impossible, you know? It, ab it absolutely is. And I, I think the more that we stop undervaluing the little victories, the more we'll just like have, and it's just like one bite at, at a time, right? Yeah. People look at something that somebody does that's really big and like, oh my gosh, you have so much dedication. Like, how did you do that? And it's like, that's not really true. Like for me, you know, my impossible in the beginning with uh, something like, um, and I can just speak to it very directly because obviously it's my experience. And so, um, it's probably a good example to talk through, but like this swimming thing, I did that as a response to recognizing that I had a, a phobia, right. And it was right. about suffocation, like having my head underwater. It wasn't just like, it freaked me out a little bit. It was yeah. a straight up, straight up panic response, completely illogical. Uh, it was not great. And I had had that like 
lifelong. And so it wasn't like I couldn't be near the water, but my head underwater, like absolutely not. Right. And I realized that certain decisions were being made because of fear. And I'm like, that is not in line with who I am. Right. I've never allowed that kind of thing to happen before. However, this was at a different level. It was like a phobia, not a fear. I had enough background in psychology and all that type of thing, thankfully, to like help myself work through some of that. So I'm not yeah. recommending other people do that on their own. by right. any means. But in the beginning, it was just like, F this, I am not putting up with this controlling like one little iota of my life. Like I won't do it anymore. And so I went and I was like, I'm going to take swim lessons. And that whole thing was like completely terrifying to me initially. But the, the first step was, I'm just going to reach out. I'm going to find somebody. I'm just going to call them. I'm just going to make the phone call. I can hang up the phone if I want to, but I'm going to call them. Right. And then I didn't hang up the phone. And then the next little step was like, I actually had a conversation like, oh my God, did we just really book a swim lesson? <laughs> <laughs> And then the next thing was actually showing up to the swim lesson and then showing yeah. up to the second one and just doing it over and over. And then when my coach, uh, the person that was like teaching me to swim, <clears throat> eventually said to me, uh, this was after a couple months of it, because like I was always doing extra work outside right. of what he had asked me to do. Yeah. And um, he goes, you like, you're ready to, you could join a master's team. Right. Wow. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, you know, and of course, master's teams, there's a whole range of, of abilities and stuff, but it, he's kind of like, you can join like the lower end of the master's yeah, yeah, team. Yeah. I was like, That's freaking terrifying to me. And so what I did is I like went home immediately and signed up for a master's team. Because again, one thing to, is just to know thyself. I knew that if I allowed myself any length of time to think about that, I would somehow make an excuse to let myself off the hooks. So I'm like, nope, I'm booking it. I'm signing up and then just like showing up to practice. And then the next like moonshot goal was, oh my God, like maybe I, after I was doing masters for a while, maybe I could go to a competition someday and like swim in a race. And yeah. that was, oh my gosh, that was a, like amazing, huge goal for me, a dream. Right. Right. And then after that, it became like, well, maybe I could do a little bit more competition. Maybe oh my God, what if one day I could qualify for nationals, right? Yeah. And so then the impossible kept becoming, well, like, let's just focus down on the little thing. Like, I'm going to show up to practice again tomorrow, even with my fear, even with the stuff that's still going on, even though these people intimidate me, fine, <clears throat> I'm going to show up because, and one thing that can help is like, if you just have things you say to yourself that are helpful, little mantras, like, because most people wouldn't, because most people wouldn't, because most people wouldn't, what do most people do? Well, great. I just look at that and I'm like, I don't really like necessarily or admire the life of most people. Right, right. right. So like, that becomes something that can drive you a little bit. And then the next thing was like, after, oh my gosh, maybe I could qualify for nationals. Then it happened. It took me a number of years to do it. Uh, but then it became, oh my God, what if I actually like could win a national championship someday with the big thing behind that? Maybe that might inspire somebody else to just take whatever their next yes, step is. Definitely. And so, you know, when you look at that, it's like, no, I've been swimming for 10 years and I have won national championships and all that stuff. And people are like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. And it's not, it was one decision to like make the phone call. Right. Right. It's a, it, you know what? It's like a call to action. If you don't do that right then and there, you're most likely not going to do it. You're going to, you're going to go in your head. Well, well, maybe this will happen. Maybe I should, blah, 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 blah. And it goes back and forth, back and forth in your head. And then you end up not doing it. And then the opportunity just flies away. So it's like, you really have to face your fear and just do that call to action right away. Because if you don't, most likely you won't just, you know, it, it's just, you, you have you to jump on it. <laughs> yeah. Jump on it. That's the best way to say it. You got to jump on it right then and there, even if you're scared, you know, and the best way to in, in boost self-esteem is to face your fears. And that's a hard thing to do. But if we could face our fears, just those little baby steps you did, it took you 10 years, but look what you built. You, you empowered yourself. You built a confidence level beyond your, your wildest dreams. You achieved the impossible, just like you said. And it was all from that one phone call, just making that one phone call didn't necessarily mean that you had to show up for the appointment, but you did step one and then you got yourself to do step two. And then those little baby steps led you all the way up the ladder. So kudos. <laughs> No, I, I appreciate that. And I, and I, and I tell that story specifically to, again, because it's my experience and I can remember like the trajectory of all of it. Yeah. And the fact that it really is not 
a big deal. If you just tell the beginning and the end of it, it seems like a big deal, but it's like, it's not a big freaking deal like at all. Another thing, you know, that might be helpful to just point out too, is how much things like motivation and inspiration, they have, inspiration in particular has, has a pretty short shelf life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just like leave it there. It's like really fresh produce that yeah. is ripe and ready to eat. And if you don't go out and do something immediately, like that will be gone. And you think because it's so powerful in the moment, like, no, I'll remember this or no, I will go do this. And it's like, no, just, just don't put yourself in that <clears throat> position to potentially like fall backward like that. It has a short shelf life. Yeah. But as you're going through, you know, because, you know, people listening to this are from totally different walks of life, different things that they do, different things they're passionate about, whatever it is you're passionate about, recognize too the things like the energetic and psychological uh, and even sometimes spiritual cycles to things, right? Right. Uh, the, you know, yesterday and Monday in the pool, especially, to, oh gosh, and Saturday too, Saturday was really bad. So <clears throat> felt like total dog crap. I felt awful. And it was one of those things like, I don't even want to be doing this, right? Yeah. Like all that kind of just, you just worn down for whatever reason and your head starts like messing with you. And one thing that can really help in times like that is having been through enough of those cycles that you go like, this is just chatter. Yeah. Chatter. Like this is going to go away. And then I'm going to, I'm going to feel great on the other side of this. I have no idea where the other side of this is. Right. But, trusting that to be able to hang on. And then it was crazy. Like I got up this morning, super tired, tired when I initially woke up, you know, five minutes to 4am. And then by the time I like get to the pool and everything gets going, uh, and I get into the workout and it was freaking amazing. Yeah. But that's the time for faith and to remind yourself of what you know when your feelings completely are out of alignment yeah. with where you actually want to go is remind yourself like just trust in what you know and don't trust transient feelings like this don't give up the, yeah. the big thing you're going after because you're in a in a slump you're in a rough patch in athletics in a business in life and parenting whatever when you're really going for it and you're sort of hitting it hard, right? There's a lot of times where you're winded, where you're gassed, where you feel like death warmed over. This is absolutely terrifying, terrifying and terrible. Like, why do I do this to myself? But you just don't really stay on that. You kind of listen to that happening and yeah. you remind yourself of what you know, which is I'm going to get through this. And those are the times, those really tough sets mm -hmm. that build the muscle. So you have the strength to support you in the next endeavor. It is preparing you for something else. So right. don't whine and bemoan that. If you're a winner and you're somebody who's going somewhere, you you have lost the ability to complain. Like if you want to whine and complain, like go play some other game, like go be lazy, go sit on the couch. Good. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like it's just a different choice. Right. But if you've chosen to grow and evolve and transform as a person, that's what you signed up for. So like, I don't, have all, a ton of, you know, <clears throat> I guess I don't give myself like a lot of leeway there. If I raised right. my hand and I signed up and I said, yes, that's me. I got to take what's coming with right. that too. That's part of the game. And that's yes. part of what makes you stronger and just be grateful for that opportunity to remember when we were like in the middle of the pandemic and nothing was open and you couldn't do Jack Diddley because of all the Anyway, yeah. so now to even have opportunities is such a beautiful thing. It's a privilege to work your butt off. It's right. a privilege to get up early. It's a privilege to lose sleep. It's a privilege yes. to have a side hustle. It's a privilege to live where you live and have the freedoms that you do. Right. It's a privilege of where you're at right now, even if it's not what you used to have and it's not what you're used to. That's one thing that kids do really, really well. They just are growing up in now. So they don't know any different. So they're not crying all the time about all the changes I have to make and the way things used to be. Yeah. They just grew up in now. And so they accept it. And what is, is, and they can move forward. Right. And if we can just capture a little bit of that back as adults, we free up so much energy. Yeah. It's being spent on trying to think about and the nostalgia of before and like, it's freaking over. Yeah. 
move on. I always you know? say the, the past is the <laughs> past. You can't change the past. You just have to focus on the present and, you know, make goals and, and, and plan for the future. That's it. That's it. And, you know, from the, um, from a practical, on a practical level, right? Yeah. You've got past, present, future, right? right? On a spiritual level, none of that stuff actually exists. There's just now. Right? Yes. And so, if we're going to be fulfilled and in a place of peace and contentment, and we're going to have true, true joy in our hearts, and we're going to have like love, like not a, not a selfish, you know, like I love you because you give me what I want. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking right. about like love and joy and peace and all the qualities that we really want in our lives to be fulfilled. That only happens in the nanosecond of right now. Yes. On a spiritual level, right. on a practical level, yes, there's planning for the future. There's learning from the past, but most people, they live there and they're very unfulfilled because yes. fulfillment is a spiritual thing. It is not a physical thing. It's not something we, it's not something we acquire, right. it's something we have available to us right now. And the only bottleneck is our potentially inability to access what's already here. Right. I agree 100%. That's a great way of putting it because we have to live in the now, you know, our, and, and spirituality, connecting with our spirituality. It's so important to focus on now and what you need now, because if you focus on now and you focus on what your needs are right now and you fulfill your needs, it, it builds you as a better person. And it absolutely does. And what are, what are flow states? Who's Who's ever been in a flow any flow state you get into, again, whatever it is that that people listening to this do that they're experts at, that they're really great at, that it's their contribution to the world because they just like naturally jive with it, right? Yeah. Everything you do that you have a special um, skill or aptitude for matters. It freaking matters. It all matters. So don't tell yourself it doesn't. And just right. like to be able to serve the world with that. But when you're really in the flow, it's present moment. When yes. we're having beautiful experiences in our lives, the one where just like kind of the clouds part and we're not chitter chatter upstairs and stressed out and anxious all the time. Yes. Those states are always profoundly present. Yes. States. It's profoundly true. Profoundly present. And so it's like so true. more of that into our lives, my gosh, the world that like such a different world just from like that one little thing and yeah. um, find little disciplines, right? Whatever it is for you, whether it's prayer, whether it's meditation, anything that can ground and center you yeah. and just quiet things down. Yeah. If you feel like you don't have time to do it, that's exactly the reason, right? Like you need to do it. I used to do that all the time. Like I'm like, I don't have time to do that. And like meditation or something. Yes. Like mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I've got so much to do. And I did like, I'm fairly busy human being right right quote unquote and it just got to the point where like nope this is something that's really really truly important and just grew and evolved over time and like now for me to pull off like a sub 45 minute meditation is incredibly difficult because the power that that like has, but it's a skill like anything else you develop right in the beginning yes. it was like I will sit here for one minute fine kind of gritting my teeth, right? And just being <laughs> I'm like, I could have already done something by now, but I'm just sitting here, right? But it's like, it's a minute at a time. Yes. A minute at a time. A minute at a time. Yes. And I find meditation is so strong and it can help you in so many ways. And even with your focus, your, your, your sense of being able to handle stress, relaxation, and be able to, to contact and understand yourself better as a person. And there's so many things that, that can benefit your life through meditation. And like you said, it's just, if you just take, you know, even though we ha might have busy schedules, if we just take a sp small portion and we can do it, you know, by prioritizing, you know, we, we could achieve the things that are most important that will benefit us the most, you know, in life. Yeah. And, and one thing that, just as you're saying that, like something you said pop, popped up for me. Uh, when we when we first start a certain endeavor, even yeah. something that might be a worthy endeavor, where other people be like, "That's really cool," like you should do that. If you told them about it, 
oftentimes our motives in the beginning are not the purest. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll speak for myself. They're not necessarily the purest, like want to shout it from the mountaintop. Here's really why I'm starting to do this thing. Right. Because right? on the mountaintop, you'd want to be like, well, yes, I just want to bless the people. And the real reason is you're like, because screw that person. Right? <laughs> and like what they just said or did or whatever. It's like sometimes that's just, that's where that's where we live, right? Like, it yes, it's, 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 real. it's humanity. It's humanity, yeah. right? And so like, you might start something for, and you're probably are going to start something great sometimes mm -hmm. yeah. for reasons that aren't necessarily, you don't need to necessarily tell anybody. Right, right. <laughs> it's yeah. like, just get going. Don't wait for everything to be perfectly lined up. Now, over time, you want those motivations to start to shift to something that runs on a little bit cleaner burning fuel, right? Because if right. something starts out of anger, you're not going to, if you finish that thing with anger, especially if it's a long-term project yeah. and you're doing it out of spite or out of resentment, any idea what that's going to do to like your body and creating incoherence and like disturbing energy patterns and screw oh, it, it destroys you inside, inside. It destroys you right and like think like that's really really key is like you don't have to start for the right reasons but you really want to start to check your motives and yes. do something for a greater purpose love is a much better purpose than like i'm super pissed off about this right super pissed off is like you know, it's like this powerful fuel, this powerful burning fuel that can like kick you off the line really quickly. Yeah. But it's really inefficient and it's really caustic and you can't burn that kind of fuel forever. No, Eventually yeah. you got to switch over to like, I really am starting to enjoy aspects of what I do and I'm I'm actually loving this and I'm seeing the impact that it's making. And you start uh, very intentionally switching over to a different fuel so that you can sustain what you're doing. Some people, you know, they start really great yeah. and they burn out because they're running that kind of a system. And it's just, it's not something you can keep going for long periods of time. No, you definitely can't because it will burn you out. And after it burns you out, you, you have nothing left, you know, and, uh, and then all the goals that you set forth for yourself, you no longer have the capabilities because you're totally burned out. And then you have to take time to renew yourself. So instead of burning yourself out, do the renewal in between in segments in your life. So you'll be able to keep going and reach those, those goals that you want. Amen to that. And, and one quick thing here is I like, cause I would consider myself like a mental fitness advocate, not a mental health advocate. And that okay. doesn't mean that I, I don't care about mental health. Don't get me wrong. Like I, no, I, like, I, I love that stuff. I study it like crazy, but I'm really much more of an advocate of mental and psychological fitness, yeah, spiritual fitness, because by the time it becomes a health crisis, you're screwed. Like you're hosed. You have big problems at that yeah. point. And like, that's just a whole different ball game. Now you're doing damage control. Now you're seeing like how much of this is actually reversible versus like how much isn't like you were just saying, staying on the front end of things and making sure you're rejuvenating at uh, appropriate intervals and that you're doing it proactively. Yes. An ounce of what is the saying? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? Yeah. And like mm -hmm. that's really what I'm talking about because you can go so much further if you don't blow up on the side of the road and they're yeah. like, well, the engine shot. Like, what are you going to do now? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I've, I've even found it in myself and I've seen it in others when you mentally, uh, um, you know, uh, don't help yourself, you know, um, and you don't keep yourself, you know, um, at par with yourself, you, you tend to, you open your, your life up for destruction when you're mentally not stable and you let go of that health aspect and you, you're not, because you, once you're not mentally stable, you don't want to do for yourself. You lose the mo motivation, you lose the urge to want to better yourself. And then you, you tend to fall into a pit and you open yourself up for destruction, illness, and everything else starts to move in because you, you're, you're not healthy mentally, you know, menta your mentality is everything. Keep a strong mentality helps you keep 
good health and and it also helps you stay fit because if you have the mentality to want to do something good for yourself you're going to eat right you're going to stay fit you're going to do the things you need to but once you you focus on the negative and you open yourself up you know and you start you know you 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 start seeing yourself slowly destroy yourself on the inner inner self and then before you know it you know you just see the ashes starting to evolve and you start to slowly disintegrate. Your life starts to go downhill from there. And it's bad news bearers, right? And the other <clears throat> piece is how much uh, when things are going sideways or you're kind of in a in an emotional funk or whatever, there's always a way to like justify why you're that. It was like, well, you don't understand. Like if you had my life situation, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, like you can build it. If you want to make a case for and defend your limitations like fine yeah right? like that's that's fine it so much of the mental game is developing guardrails as well as things like resilience yeah because we all are going to hit those rough patches and if you have a quick counter and you can get right back on track we're not talking about denial but we're talking about not spiraling out of control and being able to catch stuff early that it's like i don't even need to start thinking that direction like that's not even going to be beneficial i can deal with what's in front of me right now this right. is a challenge and i need to figure out you know what's going on or something yeah but I also don't need to put myself in a bind mentally and in terms of emotional and mental health, because I don't necessarily have the coping mechanisms. And now I just start feeling like a victim all over the place. Right. right. There's, um, and I say this with some, hesita <laughs> some hesitation, but, um, and I'm not going to explain when I say this, well, other than to say it's incredibly, incredibly true and it will seem very perplexing at times to people and probably make them upset. But yeah. this quote came from uh, Netflix. Is like the, I think it was Netflix that did Ozark, right? Right. And I'm watching that show. And one of the characters says, there's no victims here, only volunteers. And that is so true. That is so true. That is so true. So anyway, um, for what it's worth, I put it out there. <laughs> no, I, 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 that's a very true quote. And, you know, also I wanted to ask you now, you like to focus working on athletes, working with leaders, working with accomplished individuals ha that have established their careers and are walking up the ladder. Now, people like that, once they have established a sense of success and a sense of uh, confidence and inner strength, what are they now looking for that you do that you provide them with? Because they actually are going in a good direction because they are being, they are successful, but that also doesn't mean that their behaviors and their ethics and the way they do things might be healthy for them as well. So mm -hmm. what do you, what, what do you do? Like, what do these people first are looking for, you know, when they've hit that level of success and what do you do the services you provide to help them fulfill their needs? Sure. So, there's a couple of ways that typically goes. One of them is like you brought up, somebody can come to a place where things come to a head in their life and they just have so much suffering going on that they're like, fine. Like, I don't care about pride. I don't care about any of that stuff. Like this needs to get handled. And that can come to them out of a crisis of many different forms. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, a, that's very much a suffering driven, screw it. I've had enough. Yeah. Right? I'm over it. Like something is happening. Something is changing. And that's, that's the magical moment, right? right. You have to kind of cross that threshold. Um, another kind of uh, major segment I would say is people that are very, very accomplished, but they also rec they have the courage to um, recognize that there's there's like a Rocky quote from one of the Rocky movies, but like there there's there's something still left in the basement. Yeah, there's something left undone. There's there's more to me that I haven't kind of pulled up. There's a great Joel Osteen quote. He says it doesn't matter. It's not what in you what's in you that matters. It's what you get out. Right. And there's people sensing there's something more there's I need to like there's a next phase for me. And sometimes yeah. that's a huge transition out of what they're really well known for and what they're doing. And yeah. they're like, this is daunting. But my soul is like calling 
to me right now and I cannot ignore the call anymore. So that's why I need to make the change. And then I'm coming in behind that and either, I mean, obviously if it's for organizations like going in and speaking or doing workshops and just helping develop things there on a broader scale with yeah. when I'm doing individual coaching, it's very much about like, let's just dive in, like, let's go deep. Like what, what is going on? Where do we need to go? And sorting all that out and then really, really understanding what a person's natural makeup is. Right. Everybody's an individual. So then we're custom developing this program for them yeah. to help them get to like where they want to go. And like, here's where I'm at. And here's the kind of system in place with, with flexibility. Cause you need flexibility in a system. Right. Otherwise it breaks um, so that you can flex and flow with the, the, the changing days and months and weeks and whatever, but making sure they have a great system in place that we're in contact a lot, that they're getting support and that they're, they're on track because we all become our own echo chambers. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We definitely. keep telling ourselves the same story. We keep having the same thoughts. We keep having the same frustrations. We keep thinking like, well, maybe if I just do a little bit more, this has worked before. Like, why is it working now? What the heck? I'm supposed to be really good at this. Yeah. And we all have blind spots. I don't care how competent any of us are. We have blind spots. And oh, it's, definitely. We identify little tweaks that we can make. It's like, gosh, I don't know how I didn't see that. Like, that's right in front of me. Gosh, that makes so much sense. A tiny little, people think they have, because they want to be so far from where they are that, oh my gosh, the changes I'm going to need to make are huge. And it's like, probably not. You're probably doing a lot of things exactly on par, but there might be like one little thing you need to switch up a little bit. And yeah. that's in alignment, everything flows, baby. And then you're getting performance. Like you can't believe yeah. for a lot less effort than you were expecting to have to expend. Right. Now, when you have people come to you and they, they are, they can tell and you know, it's happened to so many people. I hear people say it all the time. They just feel like there's something they're lacking and they just don't know what it is. And, you know, they might have, you know, they might be blessed with so many things in their life, but they just, there's something, there's a little emptiness either in their heart or they just feel like they're lacking something. How do you find, how do you, how do you help that person find what they're lacking? How do you help that person kind of take off the blinders and actually real, you know, come to realization, this is what you need. Super great question. And the answer to that question is with a lot of questions, <laughs> right? <laughs> because I don't, you know, one of the interesting, I mean, I, I, I guess I would consider this a, an asset of mine that I'm fairly certain I like, I don't have the answers for other people. Yeah. And I'm very, very clear on that. Like yeah. I'm, I'm a really good teacher. I love doing that kind of thing, but that doesn't mean that I think I have the answers for anybody. And so right. a lot of it is going into like diving into a lot of questionings and then refining and like, okay, where does that lead us until we kind of drill down and we hit on something. And sometimes in an example like that, it might be they're, they're feeling empty because they don't know either they don't know how to, or they haven't in a really long time, or they haven't trained themselves to access that part of themselves. Right. And they think they're missing it. And it's like, you're not missing it. It's just way down in the basement in the box that like, you can't freaking find where it is. Like how many times have I misplaced things? And I yeah. like, go begging my wife. I'm like, have you seen this? Like, I don't <laughs> know what I did with it. I'm such a goof. I put it somewhere. Like, I don't know. I know that I've seen it. And yeah. sometimes it's, and here's the thing, especially for me, and this is very much a guy thing. Uh, so sorry, guys, but here it comes, right? There can be something right in front of me, right in front of me. And I'm asking her, like, where is it? Yeah. And, and she's a lovely woman, right? So she never <laughs> gets nasty about it. It's just one of those things where to her, she's thinking to herself, oh my God, like you're looking at it. It's yeah. right there, but it takes other people to spot it for us sometimes and then help us recognize like we already have that. Right. Uh, other times there is something legitimately a shift tangibly in that person's life that needs to be made. I say that's less often the case. Most of the time people think, okay, I just, they project this thing they think they need onto something out there. Mm-hmm. And they convince themselves and talk themselves into believing like, that's what it is. If I had that, actually, I would have that thing that I'm missing. And they're not recognizing, no, that's like a projection. That's a projection, yes. That would not 
at all bring you happiness. That would right. be something your ego is leading you along to get one more thing. Right. You get it. You're going to get about, get about a day or maybe a week of relief. And then it's all going to set in and you're back in the exact same cycle. Right. Exactly. So a lot of times it's, it, it's not something out there. Sometimes it is something out there. We, we are out of alignment with our values. We're out of alignment with who we truly are. And we need to start to move some things around so that we can open back up. Right. And, and that absolutely happens as well. Now, when we have to move things around, like, first of all, it seems like you, you have, you ask a lot of questions because it helps people come to realization when they're starting to talk more, it seems like they come to more, um, there, all those repressed emotions and, and thoughts and feelings kind of start to evolve. And then the, the light bulb eventually goes off and they, they come to realization of what they're actually missing in life, or is it, they just need somebody else to kind of, you know, when they see the answer kind of say, that's it. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Cause that both will happen. Um, but if, if you ever go to somebody who's like a really great doctor or a really great practitioner of whatever natural health, whatever the case might be, um, especially if you have something going on, if they ask you very surface level questions and like, cool, I know what that is. That's terrifying to me. Yeah. The yeah. fact that they think they could ask like one or two questions and then know exactly what's going on with your health based off of that, like, definitely really? not. Yeah. Like, is Unless this person is some kind of like magical medium <laughs> <right>? <laughs> that's way beyond their time, like they're not going to know based off of yeah. that. So it becomes a lifestyle questionnaire and you're trying to get like a, the fullness of the picture and appreciating this person as an individual and the place they operate from so you can really get a broader perspective right and then you know for me as a coach things start becoming a lot more clear and I can either target my questions better or I can give them very specific direction of like dude like are you you're seeing what's going on here right and they're like no I'm not I'm like hold you just right we just talked about this and we just talked about this I was on the uh I was on a coaching call with this gal and she's a phenomenal swimmer she has like all kinds of ridiculous records and everything else and um there she was trying to decide whether to go to a particular competition or not to go to it and she couldn't figure out why there was this internal conflict that was just it was tearing her apart yeah <clears throat> and she she was having a lot of trouble with it and she's a brilliant woman like absolutely like amazing human being super smart um and pretty darn self-aware, I would say. But it becomes one of those things where it's just like sometimes you look at the same thing over and over over every day. You get in a rut and you can't see something. Yeah. And so as we're going through the questioning process, I was like, I was like, got it. Because her most important um the th the thing that she values the most in right. life, that's what that's what was in play. And so if she went to the competition, right? in one way it was going to violate the value if she didn't go in another way it was going to violate right like it, they, yeah. they were just at a, a at war. odds it was like a tug of war from her like most important belief and value in life and once she understood that she's like oh my god like now i know why there's so much stress and you could just see like a lot of the stress drain because she's like i get it okay i'm not i'm not crazy at all like that makes perfect sense now and then right. we could back up and approach it from cool like now how do we want to proceed yeah now, if we took, you know, like for the, for the regular individual, like if you could give them some, some um, tips on how to, the best way is someone really wants to reach the impossible. They don't think they're capable. You know, they want to transform. They, they're, you know, basically what we're discussing, they're, they're not exactly happy with themselves. It's not that they don't dislike themselves. It's just, there's some, they feel like there's something more you know, they, they're not at the, they, they're not feeling that passion in life. They're, they're not, they're not, at the, you know, they, they're just kind of lost in a sense because they want more from life, but they just don't know what it is. You know, how do you get that person, you know, from, from square one to some tips that would help them start figuring it out, make life a little bit, you know, easier so they can, sure. you know, self, self help themselves. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that came to mind is you're, 
um, finish that up was prayer would be a big thing. And whatever that means for people, that can also just be contemplation, right? I'm not talking about like in a religious sense, so don't get all bristly, right? Um, yeah. If you're, if you're, if you're not of that persuasion, it's just like, just um, getting in that space though, of like prayerfully or in a contemplative way, considering that and just being humble enough to like, I give you a little help here, <laughs> a little help from the universe, just like, like something, but not doing it in a, in a way that's bemoaning the fact or complaining, right? Yeah. Like that, because that will get you very different answers. If you, if you come to the table complaining, you get very different answers from just like my hat is in my hand and I'm coming here humbly asking, I'm very grateful. I have so much going for me. And I think that's a lot of it on the front end is just being tremendously thankful yeah. and taking stock of that before you show up and just unload right? right so it's showing up with a grateful heart and a thankful heart for what you do have and then just laying it out there and then trusting that an answer will come and then i think you leave that alone and you start to dive into things like a few practical things somebody could do in that situation one would be find an, an environment that is two main pieces one People in whatever area where you're trying to kind of like bolster things, yeah, where the people in that environment make you a little bit uncomfortable because they're they're definitely further along, like authentically further along, right? But it's also inspiring and it's also an empowering environment because if you go to a place that's like, oh my gosh, it's super inspiring, right? But these people are jerk faces it's not going to help you very much right like yeah. you need a supportive environment but a supportive environment does not mean somebody who's going to coddle your feelings and enable you to continue in the same pathological downward spiral as before so it's yeah. being very specific about those pillars of like it's makes me a little bit uncomfortable it's inspiring this environment or this person that I'm going to go spend more time with right and I'm going to carve out time in my schedule right and they're also or the environment is actually very encouraging. It's something where I could see like, I can take like one more step because that's really, really what it's all about. It's just like, what's the hardest thing when people go, oh my gosh, like I'm just not ready for that. And this is a lot in the head sometimes, but just like, I'm not ready for that. And like my schedule's all messed up and like this and that. It's like, stop talking yourself out <clears throat> of your destiny and your dreams why are you advocating for mediocrity? Like you would not put up with that. So that in your kids, you wouldn't put it up with somebody talking to one of your friends that way. Right. And I got pretty good a long time ago, just calling BS on myself. Right. Like, dude, <laughs> that's such a load of crap. Yeah. You're just on a coaching call with somebody and you or meeting with them or whatever. And you just talk to them about this very thing. And here you go, Brian, I can't tell you how many times this happened. And that's why yeah. I appreciate the opportunity to come talk and share in dialogue with you. Because anytime I'm going through this stuff, what it really does for me is it's, it may be a good reminder for other people. I don't know. I hope it is. I hope it serves people. It's very motivating. It's it really, the, it's an eye opener. Good, good, good. Cause like for me, that's exactly how I feel. This gets me fired up because I'm like, you know what, dude, you are talking to yourself this entire podcast. Right. This is everything that you need to focus and work on and remind yourself. And another thing that I would tell people to finish answering that question, just another basic thing, have some re specific reminders in front of you. Mm -hmm. So that when your energy does dip and it does come down, they don't necessarily need to be inspiring, like, inspirational sayings, right? Yeah. It's not so much that just keeping something in front of you. That's very basic and simple because it's crazy. Like I've had this. Okay. So <clears throat> I think this is, yeah, this is the last week of my, I do objectives by quarter for my, for myself and for a lot right. of my clients. And so like I'm coming up on the end of this quarter and there's still things I've been literally reading them every day or close to every day, this entire quarter that's a long freaking time. And yeah. it's not a long thing to read. And I will still spot something and be like, I looked at that this morning and I already forgot about it. Yeah. But thank God I have it posted or it's somewhere part of my daily routine because you know what? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is going to keep my compass on true North. Like I was getting off tack a little bit yeah. and now that can help pull me back. The best people, <clears throat> the, the, excellence, the higher echelons of 
anything, business, sports, uh, life, parenting, artists, whatever, the highest echelons, they, they probably actually get off track more than the normal person. Right. Actually, I'm sure that they do. They get off track more than the average at whatever that profession is. Yeah. That average person, they get off track way more. However, they, they course correct really freaking quickly. The refractory period from when they start to deviate from where they're going is like really minimal. And one of the reasons for that is because like they have their compass on true north and they're looking at it. Yeah. Some of us have a compass and it sits there and we like leave it in the freaking kitchen dr- junk drawer of our life. Right. And we're like, oh my gosh, I forgot I put this here. Like if you're going somewhere, that compass has to be somewhere where it is going to remind you to course correct really, really quickly. So that would be kind of a practical thing that I think might be uh, a benefit. It yeah. certainly has been in my life when I actually use it. <laughs> That's a great idea. No, I like that. I like that idea a lot. Now on your website, like you have various services. Can you tell the audience the different things that you provide people with? Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say, I mean, there's a number of things, but primarily it's going to be um, either like the the speaking side of things, right? Mm-hmm. Like coming in, either delivering talks or like I, I mentioned or alluded to earlier, uh, workshops, right? Mm-hmm. When we're talking about like leadership and how the psychology piece comes into that yes. um, or just really like, like peak level performance. And I, and then how do we create something that is um, amazing, but also isn't going to blow up our engine, so to speak. There's a lot right. of considerations there. Like how do we, the science of communication, like between people, especially folks that are working closely together. And there's a lot of passionate type A people in a room yeah. oftentimes, how do they actually come together and function as a team? Like that's one reason a lot of you know um superstars don't play well together right they just don't you can't put a bunch on the same team because they like beating the crap out of each other in the locker room and so you know they come out on the floor and like there's nothing left and they get beat by a team that's much less skilled and that can be really frustrating in business just as i can in sports super frustrating you're like looking at these other folks and you're like we have so much more to offer than them. Like, why are they outdoing us at yeah. every single turn? Right. So like a lot of it is figuring out like, how do we integrate all these pieces and these different people with different individual motivations to focus behind something that's a grander vision that is, that's big enough for all of us and like more yeah. people to get drawn into. Like, that's what everybody wants to be a part of. So a lot of it is that, that kind of thing in group settings. Again, um, you know, like, coaching services, one-on-one coaching, like those are the things I specialize in. Like, like you alluded to, there's some like other pieces in there, but, yeah. um, those are really, 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 um, the, the, the big ones. Now, where can people find your website? Sure. Yeah. So it's bergfordperformance.com. Bergford is spelled kind of like Berg as an iceberg, Ford as in the car, <laughs> uh, bergfordperformance.com. And, go ahead. And I would say, make sure to sign up for the email list because like, I, I don't do a ton of stuff on social. I just don't. So if you're going to like find me on social, you're not going to get a lot of stuff from me. probably. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, and the email list though, like that's where I tend to stay in contact with people and right. know what's coming up and like what I'm working on and getting like performance tips and different things like that and knowing what's available. Uh, the other thing is like, just send me if, if there's something I can do for you or you have a question or you just, you're curious, you want to reach out, like that's one of those things, like just make the call, right? Like how how many people like the telephone just stops them from doing something that like could completely change your life. You can always say no, right? Right. Later, right? Exactly. In anywhere in life, like just take a step, right? And a lot of times, you know, it's the right step. If it makes, it's got to make you a little bit uncomfortable or where you're like, like, okay, Uh, you get, got to talk yourself into a little bit sometimes that's a great thing so yeah. like, if people just want to reach out to me directly like kick me over an email uh, it's brian spelled with an i as an indigo so brian at bergfordperformance.com and um i'd be happy to get back with them connect and and see what i might be able to do to help and if i don't find that like we're the right fit together like i'll point you somewhere else right like i don't care i'm very interested in the 
proper fit yes. of a relationship, um, much more so than like it needs to be me, right? Like I have no interest in like selling myself to people as like right. you need me. It's like you don't freaking need me, right? Like if I'm the right partner for for you, I might be able to help support you in your journey, whatever that is. Yeah, um, and that's that's what we're all after. Mission accomplished. Like if that person gets to where they want to go with me or with somebody else, great. That's what it's all about. I think that's awesome. You know, thank you so much, Brian, for sharing all this information with us today. You definitely have been a true motivation and the information you provided was very informational. And I think it's going to help a lot of people and make a lot of people see that, you know, you know, achieving the impossible is not impossible, that we have the ability to achieve what we put in our heads. It's just baby steps and so forth. And thank you once again. And before we go, I just want you to say your website one more time, just so it hit, it stays in people's heads. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and I have to thank you for Stacey, because I appreciate you so much. And just having the opportunity to have uh, listen to you and your podcast and the work you do. And as somebody who's written one book and you've written 20, and I'm like, <laughs> thank oh, you. like my next doing the impossible might need to look like get on it a little bit right and so um I, I just appreciate what you do and your expertise you. and i've learned a lot from you so thank you it's it's a blessing to be on here uh my website again is bergfordperformance.com and my email is brian at bergfordperformance.com <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I've had a wonderful um, time talking to you. And, you know, like I said once before, you shared so much valuable information. Thank you for coming on to the show. Thank you for having me. Take care. Have an awesome day. You too.